But it was really this moment where I just was like, wake up. And, and then I just found myself really kind of going, am I awake? Am I like kind of in my own thoughts throughout the day? Just like, what am I, what am I doing right now? What is the, what am I doing? Like what's your daily routine? What's, what's Kevin's like, I wake up, I feel this, I don't feel this. And this is what I do to feel this way. Like, how do you approach your family in the morning? I'd, I'd love to know this. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's easy. So, so I get up in the morning. Um, I usually wake up somewhere between five and six forty-five. Mad respect. So I don't, I do not do alarms. My body just wakes up naked, naturally, naturally that way. But I, I don't, I don't do an alarm. What time do you go to bed? Uh, I go to bed anywhere from nine thirty to eleven o'clock. Do you subscribe to Netflix? I do subscribe to Netflix. Do you ever watch it? Uh, rarely. It's more for my family. Yeah. So I don't. I don't. Um, here's a weird thing about me. I don't really watch movies. Okay. I don't. Um, I I'm not on social media anymore. I got off a few years ago. We'll, and, ha- we'll have to revisit that yeah, too. Yeah, and I also I don't watch or or listen to any news. So, tell me why. Um, because I don't know when was it was probably like two years ago or two and a half years ago. It was it was it was shortly after I got off social media. Um, I I found myself like I kind of to replace social media. I jumped into news and I was just consuming news, and I realized. At some point, I just was like, "What? What am I being sold here?" It didn't matter what angle it was coming from; it's all garbage they're feeding you, and it's it's based on fear, anxiety. Like it's just, and that's, and I just thought, I actually, I actually don't need this in my life anymore. And I don't know who said it; I don't know who to attribute this quote to, but it said something to along the lines of, um, "Once you hear about a shooting." you know, the second one's not news. Like it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's just there for more that the news is making money off of you. And when I realized once I just really opened my eyes to that, that they're just making money off of me, I, I kind of was just like, I don't need this in my life. I don't need, um, and especially like if I'm getting my news through Google or whatever, and, and, and they're kind of, and you can kind of see how it's these platforms start to tailor the news to you like this is what you you're gonna look at and they just keep feeding you more of it and okay and, but so on. i just checked out of that i love that but okay so what what would you say to someone who says it's like your social responsibility yeah to know what's going on yes I, because I, alice and i talk about this yeah and i know where I, I personally land but i would love to know where you land on this okay so that's a great question because last year or actually it was 20 christmas of 2021 i was at a neighborhood christmas party and um, a very um, prominent um, woman in in Provo, I mean, for decades, um, older woman, very prominent. Um, I, this came up that I, I said, I've been off the news for like a year and a yeah. half. And she looked at me with just like shock and like, and said, well, how do you know who to vote for? <laughs> <laughs> that was like, and this is, and this is a woman that I look up to and I, and I, and I admire and, but I thought, and I looked at her and I thought, seriously, like, how do I know, who, like, why would I trust anything that's coming out of any of these news outlets on who I'm going to vote for? It's like, you, you have know? to take all their garbage yeah, just and, to get that one, yeah, to figure yeah, out that one but, thing. But, but I thought that was so interesting. And so I look at that same with that. It's your social responsibility. Yeah. Really? Like coming from. News coming from where? Like, like that. That's my social responsibility. Like, dude. And this is the. This is. This is what I say. Knowing you is you are living a great life and you have influence on people. You've influenced me and all those around you. Yeah. And I would say that your social responsibility is being fulfilled even greater by focusing on living a good, yeah. effective life. Yeah. Instead of being bogged down taking these narratives yeah. and knowing like all the, all the things that are going yeah. on. Well, it's like with social media, we, we tell ourselves, Oh, I, need, I, I would like to be off social media, but it's how I stay connected. But it's not true. 
that's a lie you're telling yourself. You're not really connected. I know. You're, that's so true. It, it, like last night, literally, I was yeah. – like I've been making – so my mantra this year is, is called practicing delight. Okay. And I, and it is like, it, it's replacing being present for me because being present is not as fun as it sounds like the practice of it. Like, yeah, I just gotta be present. It's always just like this nagging yeah. reminder. Yeah. But practicing delight yeah. um, is like in every moment there's like, I've said this before, like the, you can even feel the texture of your clothes and be yes. like, oh my gosh, how is this made? Yes. Like, this is so cool. This is on my body. Like my body, I can feel like the blood pumping through my veins. You can practice to light literally everything. I'm loving your hat. Yeah. Like you can, you can yep. find something that's awesome. And so that's been my mantra. But last night I was so tired and I was going to, we have like a million house plants up there and I'm like, I'm going to water the plants. They're due. And then I sat down on the couch and I started scrolling. 25 minutes later, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm completely numb. I feel like crap. I did not connect. That's it. And so I'm saying you are so right. Social media at its best, maybe like keeps us abreast of people that we are on our fringe that are like nice to know about yeah. if something happens, but at its worst, it's a complete numbing check out of reality. Yep. And I, yeah, that's how I feel. So yeah. it's cool to hear that you say that. So anyways, I, that, that's a total tangent that we just went on. We were talking about my morning. Yeah. But, tell me where, yeah. So I get up somewhere between 545 or five o'clock and six 45, depending. Um, I, and I get up and then I, uh, if it, let's say I, like this morning, I got up at six 45. I took, I take my son to school, to high school, drop him off, come home, help get the other kid, two kids out the door to elementary school. And then, um, and then I usually go to the rec center. So I like going to the rec center and I'll just do a workout there. Um, or and then or I'll go for a hike. It's it's usually either yeah. one of the one of those. And then, um, but with all the snow right now, it's not not so easy to go hiking. But but then um, and then I come home and 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 while I'm working out, I don't listen to um, I don't I don't listen to music. Dude, I, you're you're this is so wild to me. But yeah, so, yeah. Okay, keep going. I, I love music. I love yeah. music. I don't listen to music while while I'm working out though. Um, Do you know who David Goggins is? I, I know who he is. Yeah, I he, mean he runs like his knees are like total yeah, crap, and he's yeah. running millions of miles, and he's like listening to music while running is cheating. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I for me for me what happened is in in 2018 I left So Delicious for a while, mm -hmm. um, and it was kind of a a really like negative following out I had with my partners, and and I was out, and uh, I. And all I did was go up Rock Canyon every single day. And at first I, I was going up Rock Canyon because I had, I had nothing to do. Um, I was literally being paid to just go away from So Delicious. So I was, and I was like hurt. I couldn't believe it. Like this, I had, and I was, I, I mean, I was devastated. And, and so they brought in a new CEO and I left and I, I just went hiking every day. And at first I was listening to, I was just hiking that canyon every day, listening to like, I, I mean, it's just, it's funny, but there, there's this, there's this rare, this one Motley Crue album. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes. But that doesn't, there, and anyways, there's this one Motley Crue album that I would just listen to on repeat because it just felt good with Dude, my anger. Like, right. Oh like, yeah, I get it. Like I it just it. felt like. It just felt good with that rage I felt inside and those and it those grievances I was just holding on to and and Dude, Megadeth for me is the same. Okay, thing. Megadeth God. is yeah. for you. Yeah. So so it, it was the Motley Crue Generation Swine album, which is just like such a <laughs> dumb album. Like it's not like I mean it's fine, no offense to any of the guys at Motley Crue, but like it, it's just like such a silly thing. But I would listen to that thing over and over. And I mean I and I would just go up those mountains and I would walk I would walk for 15 miles. I would just go, you know, just every day because, because I didn't know what I was going to do. And I was just angry. And, and that, so I was listening to that and I was listening to just a bunch of other, that kind of genre music, which is kind of the music of my youth. Yeah. Like the, the early nineties, oh, yeah. late eighties, early nineties. I'm 45. I'm 40. Okay. I'm right behind yeah, you. Yeah. So I'm 45. So I, I was a giant Guns N' Roses fan. Um, I, you know, and Molly Crew, those, I saw those guys 
you know, when I was like in high school yeah. and that was like the thing. So anyways, but, um, as I kept walking up that Canyon and going some, it just, it was just weird. It was like one day I was just like, I think this music's actually affecting me. Like it was the first time that that had like really ever occurred to me that like, maybe this music is not helping me. Um, and so I, I started listening to, um, so I, it, I, I, I made a total switch. I switched over to Wayne Dyer. You know oh. Wayne Dyer? Oh my gosh. Ero Your erroneous sounds changed my life. Oh, did it? That's okay. One of the best books ever written, I think. Yeah. So I had read, um, earlier in my, like probably, I don't know, 2008, I'd really gotten my life screwed up by 2008, I think between 2000 and I don't know. And you know. were a dad at this time. Yeah, I was a dad at this time. I'd really gotten my life screwed, but I was like, um, I had uh, read this Wayne Dyer book. You'll see it when you believe it. Oh yeah. And and um, because growing up, my mom kind of was in Wayne Dyer a little bit, and like she would like I could he I would hear like his tapes or whatever on in the mm -hmm. background or whatever, and <clears throat> I didn't really think anything of it. But but I read this book when I was in 2008. And there's a part in there he talks about forgiving his dad. And I had some issues with people that I needed to forgive and, and that I'd been carrying around since I was a little kid. Yeah. And, uh, and that, that kind of unlocked some things for me. So anyways, fast forward now to 10 years later, 2018, I'm been listening to Motley Crue going up the Canyon. I'm angry. Um, and I just switch over to, uh, this Wayne Dyer, uh, book, or it's, it's not a book. It's like a, it's like a lecture series. Lecture. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And where I think it's called the 10 secrets for success and inner peace or something like that. And, and as I was doing it, I just like felt myself getting lighter as I was starting walking and listening to that. I felt myself getting lighter and started like working through the anger and some of the stuff I was, you know, I was having and, and, and was able to kind of like shed, I, I was able to shed that anger and kind of those grievances I was holding those things that I was just, I mean, it's like when we get grievances, I, this is really where I have discovered in life is that these grievances that we hold, they're just these like stupid illusions that we hold on to that we just, we hold on to. And then we, and we, tell ourselves all the reasons why we're justified in having them. And, and all they do is hold us back from, from peace. All they do is hold us back from love. All they do, like they hold us back from the true, real miracle of forgiveness. And I'm not, I'm not talking about the book. I'm yeah, talking yeah. about the real like miracle that happens when you let go. Why do you think that, what is the pay? There's a payoff when we hold grievances, what is, you know what I'm saying? It's not a good payoff. What yeah. is that payoff that why would, what I'm wondering, why do you think we hold on to those? Cause it's ego. Our so ego, yeah. ego, okay. ego has to have grievances. You have, you have to be right. You have like, that's, that is ego is like the most. And, and this is the thing. I think so many people go through life, not even understanding what ego is mm -hmm. and, 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 um, and ego doesn't have to be like some rich and famous, you know, rock star or movie star or something like that. Everybody has ego. It's part of the package of life. It, it absolutely is. Great example of this is, and I feel like I've been working so hard. I've been, I feel like I've been working so hard at like letting go of ego, just any way I, any way I encounter it, trying to, to let go of it. But last night I, I was in line to get gas at Sam's club, pouring rain. I've been waiting for 17 minutes to like get to one of these pumps. And I was like, why am I even here? Like, what does it matter? It's like <laughs> 10 more cents over there. Like what, what, why did I do this? And anyways, I'm the next in line. I am the next in line to drive up to this pump. And there's one pump that's out of order. They've got like flags there saying it's out of order. And this little, this, Tucson or whatever it is. It was a Tucson drives up. Well, what the heck's a Tucson? What you know, it's like a Hyundai Tucson. Is oh, it yeah, Hyundai? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Drives up and then drives in backwards right down the middle aisle and <laughs> flips around. Cause he thought that for some reason that, that pump 
was not out of order. And then he sees it's out of order, but he then does not want to go get in the line of like 20 cars. Oh my gosh. So then he just <laughs> waits right there until the guy in front of him moves and he pulls up into it, which was going to be my quote unquote or quote unquote my spot, you know, like, and I pulled up and I was like, I felt this rage, <laughs> like, and I opened my door and I opened my door and and I'm like, hey, you just cut in front of all of us. He's like, and he said, yeah, I did. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> and I had this moment of like, my ego wants to do something about this because mm -hmm. I've been wronged because mm -hmm. my ego has been wronged because somehow I waited 17 minutes. Everybody else is, you know, like waited 17 minutes. You like you have wronged us all, you know, and here I was this all I could see in front of my face was this giant grievance with this guy. And I had to shut my door and I had to just look at it. I'd not look at the guy who's filling up right in front of me, but literally just look at this grievance that I was holding that somehow I had just been wronged and I needed to make things right. And and when he's saying, what are you going to do about it? He's exactly right. What am I going to do about it? Can I, am I just going to go out there and yell at him? And like, I mean, there, there's nothing to do about it except deal with it internally anyways. And so, um, that was just a funny little thing and I went through. That, that's night. like a mark microcosm of like how we do grievances and how our ego, like in my life, it can get like in your marriage, for example, but yeah. also maybe like. Look, looking at the ego a little deeper, our ego with our children, our family, our yeah. job. Like what, what I love about you is I have seen you over the last 10 years, like kind of refine yourself and drop your ego, Yes, which is something I really look up to. But what's interesting is you had that 2008 was so hard. Yeah. Did you feel like you'd been like kicked to the curb? Like, 2008 or 18? Or 18, 18, 18. When, they, when you left So Delicious. Like, yeah. Because, because... For those of you who don't know, Sodalicious is this soda chain in Utah, and it, like, blew up. Yeah. It's all over, and it's very popular. It has a great reputation. Kevin and Annie are the founders, or co-founders. And from the outside looking in, you would think, like, oh, what, what a great life they have. I mean, like, they're on top of the world. They're running super successful chain. Everyone knows them. Yeah. Healthy family. Yeah. And then, and you are living, you're living a good life. And yeah. then two th 2018 happens. Yeah. Um, can you just tell us more about like the feeling you had, like how you dealt with, oh, like what, what did you feel alone? Were you like wandering well, spiritually? Like, yeah, what happened? And I feel like it's, it, it's interesting. You, you were the one that actually turned me on to Michael Singer. Oh, you were gosh, with Untethered yeah. Soul. You, cause on that hike, you told me about that. And so I went and, and, and anyways, I went down a Michael Singer rabbit hole for a while and, and just ate everything up. But I remember him in an interview, someone was trying to ask him about his past and he just didn't he wouldn't talk about it. He was like, yeah, it's just the past. Like he didn't, he just doesn't Whoa. even like want to talk about it. He put it out in the, in his book or whatever, but he, he was getting asked about it and just like, yeah, no, that's the past. Doesn't want to talk. And I thought it was so interesting. Can I ever get to a point where it's just like, yeah, I don't even need to talk about yeah. the past anymore, you know? Cause it's also still a story that my ego's I know, telling it's, itself, right? It's crazy. We go that's back to that justifying story. how I am now or who I am. But, but in 20, like, so but yeah. hey, there is value. I mean, I get that. I really respect that. Yeah. Respect that. There is value, though, in in storytelling, in relating to others. Absolutely. That way. So I agree. So for me, it's it's funny because this is, I mean, uh, this is just my experience, my life. Like, this happened. So we started So Delicious. Um, I started the So Delicious Instagram. And then I started my own, because I was posting stuff, I was posting stuff that had people at so delicious or customers coming in at so delicious or, and then, and then there was like stuff of me at so delicious or, or whatever. And I had partners or whatever, take issue with too much me there or whatever. So I broke off and did my own so delicious Kev. So yeah. delicious Kev Instagram. Yeah. So that was that. like, that was like, okay, there's so delicious, but then there's so delicious Kev over here. And, and I'm going to make 
since there's stuff I can't do on the So Delicious Instagram, I'm going to do it over here on the So Delicious Kev one, and you can see what it's like in my life. You can see what it's like running a soda shop. You can see the stuff we're dealing through and I, dealing with. And I, I mean, I, and I showed you the highs and lows. I went, I like was running that thing all the time, mm-hmm. and and so um, when I left in 2018, at, when I was going up and down that canyon, I just like I didn't. I, I just started really asking myself, like, who, who am I? What am I? And I feel like, you know, I'm LDS. I went on a mission. We, we, we ask, we teach people about, you know, where did I come from? Where am I going? You know, like, like those questions. But, but all of a sudden I felt like I was really asking myself those questions. What am I? Like, who am I? My name's not Kevin. I'm not Kevin. I'm not. Even if you didn't have your name, yeah, you'd still be who you are. Yeah, there's something else. Yeah. And, and that for me was, I really started going, what, what is this? It was like all of a sudden there was some, somebody else there in that like canyon with me. Not like, not like, uh, like in my head or there, there was just, it was almost like I could see observing myself from a different vantage point almost I'm, I'm using my hand here like back behind kind of over here it was almost like I could see myself here I was going up the canyon but I could wit- witness myself from this other perspective yeah and I was like well wait a second what what is this like am I this guy or am I this w- observer thing thing like it was this weird experience right and and it sounds insane i mean people watching or listening are probably like okay this guy's nuts but but i um it really made me start looking at like at that deeply like what am i what what is i mean i really went through everything again what is my relationship to god what is god you know like really i i know what i've been told throughout my life and, and kind of what I went along with. And yeah, I believe this. And, and, and then I got to this place where I was just really like, what do I, what do I really know? Which is not much. (laughs) And what do I really believe? Which was, I don't really know. And this is when, what year? 2018. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Looking in, you would think that Kevin has this all put together. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going through this, like I'm letting go of this anger stuff and, and I'm, I'm kind of just having this, like, um, not a faith crisis by any means. I don't, I wouldn't call it a faith crisis. I just, I'm having this kind of like, um, existence. <laughs> I don't know. Existence, exist, existential crisis. I don't know. It was just kind of like, was this a midlife crisis? What, you know what, like, what is this? I don't know. It what it didn't feel like a crisis. So, and crisis is such a good media word, you know? Yeah. Um, uh, but it, it wasn't that it was just this, um, period of, of eye opening kind of exploration, um, just re-examination maybe. And do you, do you feel like your ego kind of broke at this point to be able to look at this stuff? Yeah. I feel like, um, I, I knew that I did not want to be so delicious Kev anymore. I was like, I'm not so delicious Kev. Dude, I think your ego broke a little bit. Yeah. I was just like, I, I, I'm not so delicious Kev. And I just, just yeah, I was just kind of like, I, I don't, but I don't know. Like there was like, I it was yeah. just kind of like, but that's not that anymore. And I thought I was never coming back to so delicious. I thought I was gone. At that point, I did not want to come back to so delicious. I wanted to go do something else. I just like, I just, I wanted to be completely out of it that lasted for six months <laughs> and so annie and i still owned a majority of the company six months later uh there are a bunch of stuff that happened that i probably just can't go into but i had to come back and uh take over yeah. as ceo again and um i did not want to come back as ceo i did not want to come back at all And, um, but it was me and Annie's name on the line on all the leases, the loans, all the stuff. And 
we didn't like the direction things were going. And so I came back and I was, I was, I was just sick about it. I remember that I, I, so I came back on November 1st, 2018. So the night before was Halloween and I was out trick or treating with the kids and I don't, <laughs> this is such a random story. Uh, I dressed up like Buckethead. Do you know Buckethead? Yeah. The guitar player? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Anyways, I just had a mask on and a Kentucky Fried <laughs> Chicken bucket on my head. I don't know. Anyways, I just, I was really, I probably it was metaphoric that I just didn't want to be seen by anybody. But I like, I, um, I, I remember just walking, there was this neighbor girl. She was like, I don't know, four years old, maybe three years old at the time. And she lives up the street. We're friends with her family or whatever. And we, and like our kids are friends or whatever, but she grabbed my hand when we went to her and, and then went trick or treating me with, with me the rest of the night. Like I, cause I was so nervous about the next day coming back and it was the weirdest thing. She said, come on, Kevin, let's go. And she, and I took her through the neighborhood trick or treating. Like her parents were cool. It was fine. Like yeah, they, yeah, yeah. we were all together. It wasn't yeah. some weird thing. And, <laughs> and, uh, but I just, I can, I cannot explain to you the peace that came to me. Just from that little innocent kid holding my hand and going trick or treating, and and knowing that tomorrow, like all hell was going to break loose in my company, and um, anyways, I, I, such a random sorry story. No, I, no, I love that because it that goes into dumb. what I want to ask. Okay, so you had the six month break of kind of hell, death, rebirth, right? Yeah, and then this little girl taking trick or treating brought this piece. Okay, so. There's an argument to be made that these are all just coincidental things that happen in life. Yeah. I assume that you've chosen to attribute it to God blessing you or watching over you and knowing what you need. Do you? Oh, abs those? absolutely. So why, why, what is, what has been the outcome of you deciding it to see it as God giving you these gifts as opposed to just life happening? Um, gosh, I don't even know how to like... And you can use other, I mean, just think, I mean. Yeah. So I think that like, here's the thing. I've always believed in God. So I don't remember a time in my life where I, I didn't believe in God. There's times I've felt like so far away from God and, and, and by my own doing so completely far away from God. Um, but I feel like I really started to connect with God personally, like have, um, during that time, 2018 is when I started like meditating. And so, um, I, and I, I just started going through, um, well, how I got there. Can I talk about how I got yeah, there? Okay. Yeah, Sorry. It's, it does, it's not really quite answering your question, but, but I, I had a dream. I was, it was like a, one morning I was, I was you're just in that place right before you wake up where you're kind of dream kind of like yeah and uh something said to me i don't know just like there just a voice said to me kevin you need to wake up and i was and i was like oh okay like i i'm awake I'm, I'm waking up, I'm awake. And he's like, and, and the voice was just like, I, I don't know voice, but it was like inside my head, but it was just like, you need to wake up. And right then I just realized I'm asleep, but not like I'm asleep in bed asleep, but like I've been asleep. Like I have been going through this whole life in a dream. I, I, I again, this does, it sounds so wackadoo. I think it's more relatable than you think. Okay. Cause it, yeah. Cause I don't, it's not like I go talking about this to people cause it, you start sounding real crazy, you know, but I realized, Oh my gosh, I have been living my life asleep, purposeless, is purposeless a word without purpose. It is now. Yeah. And, and thinking I was somehow on purpose because your ego tells you because you have a good business and your family because you think you're on you're, purpose. Yeah. Yes, you just Live like in a cool oh yeah, we're doing this. Yeah, we're doing and great, I'm, and I'm doing this according to the way, you know, the culture, or the mm -hmm. world, or or what this group of people thinks, or whatever. I'm I'm I'm, and I realized just none of it mattered. None of it mattered. 
and I was like, it was, it was, I was just floored. Like from this one wake up. You yeah, had all wake this, up. This like all this, was, this is what really started for yeah. me. So, so like, you know, I had been hiking the canyon angry. I'd been listening to Wayne. Like that had been helping me work through stuff. But it was really this moment where I just was like, wake up. And, and then I just found myself really kind of going, am I awake? Am I like kind of in my own thoughts throughout the day? Just like, what am I, what am I doing right now? What is the, per, what am I doing? And, and so that took me down this kind of this journey of how do I, how do you wake up? Like, I, yes, I'm, I'm up and doing stuff, but how do you actually wake up to what's actually really going on? Like things as they really are. And, 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 um, and that really started me down this kind of this road to, to where I'm now. And I do not by any means say where I am now is like any great thing. I know I have peace in my life, you know, and how, how how much value is that to you? Well, it's, it's more than anything, right? Like, like, um, but I, I have peace and I have a great life, but I, I don't, but I, um, but I, I feel like I feel like I'm still trying to come to know God. Okay. Okay. So Kevin, there is, um, there is some like economic unrest right now. Okay. And I have friends that like one specifically who's a, who thinks he's going to lose his job. Yeah. And I love this dude and I watch him talk to me and I can just see like, he only can see what he thinks and he's like, this is what's going to happen. There's no jobs out there. Not that he's like super negative, but yeah. it's interesting to see people put limits and define what reality is. Yeah. And I feel like you do a really good job of not letting, of not deciding what's going to happen. Okay. From what you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So how would you, what advice would you give to someone out there who is, anticipating something really hard or is in the thick of something hard and basically like what maybe something they could do to think about it differently or implement a practice. You know what I'm saying? Like what, what would you say to someone who's truly hurting and can't see past like their nose? Like that, uh, because we've all been there. I know you've been there. Yeah, I know. I, the I, last two years is like that for me. Yeah. I know what I would say, but I want to know what you would say. Yeah. Um, uh, I, uh, I would, for me, I would say meditate. So, and, and people go, what does that mean? Like, and, and I, and, and what I would say, and I can only say what worked for me. That's all I want right? you to say. I don't want, and, yeah. For, and, and, and it said, what I say sounds so simple. You think it's stupid. I sit down in the morning. So usually we were talking about my morning earlier. I, I go, I come home from the rec center or hike or whatever. And then I sit down in my living room and a chair in my living room. And from that chair, I can hear the low, very low hum of my refrigerator. I know exactly. What you, I know this. I know this phenomenon. I know all the noises of my house from sitting yeah. quietly. Yeah. So I sit for 20, I set a timer for 20 minutes and I only listen to the hum of the refrigerator. Okay, from the outside, this sounds so dumb. Stupid. Sounds yeah. so stupid. Yeah. So, and 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 that's fine. Like, I mean, but if you're listening to this podcast, at least you you you've got to be somewhere on this journey. So mm-hmm. why not try it? Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's harder than you think. First of all, like to just zone in on one sound for twenty minutes, sixty seconds. You can't. It's literally impossible. It takes. When it you're, takes when you're a beginning. while. Yeah. And when you're starting meditation, it takes a while. To, to get yourself to that place. Totally. Like at first when I started with meditation, I thought it was like, oh, I got to like focus on this mantra or I got to this phrase or I got to like picture what I'm going to manifest or, you know, mm-hmm. all these things. Cause I got real into like, I'm going to manifest stuff. And, 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 and then I realized, no, I just going to get totally quiet. And so I sit down, I, I feel myself, I, I just close my eyes and I can feel 
myself sit in the chair. I know what my butt feels like on the chair. I know what the back of my arms feel like against the chair. Just like when you were talking about the texture on your pants or whatever, I, I feel, I just kind of go through my whole body and what, what is actually feeling. Cause when you think like, it's the craziest thing when you really actually step back and look at your body, it's just this machine that is meant to it's a meat, take it's sensory a meat sack. data. This is the worst term meat sack. It's hilarious. It that's is. What it is. <laughs> but it's this, and all it does is take sensory data and interpret it for you. And then you make the meaning out of it. And, and you put a filter there to decide yeah. what that data... Yes. What it means. Yeah, is, you, yeah this yeah. is good or this is bad. Yes, yeah. yes, exactly. Instead of just looking at it. Mm-hmm. It's like, that's how I... when I, You know that feeling when you're having anxiety or something and it's just right there in your chest and you just think, oh mm-hmm. my gosh, that, that feeling? Yeah. I just started looking at that. like, And I'm not one that's really ever been like prone to like anxiety or like, I'm not like, I don't, but, but I know that feeling, but it's, and I know a lot of people do. And I, this is what I always tell them. Just observe that. Just look at it. Like, instead of like attaching all the labels and all the meaning that that feeling has Mm -hmm. to you or somehow just look at that and see what the actual physical response is in you and what's happening in your body. So I do that. I calm down. I take like three or four deep breaths, just watching the breath go in, watching the breath go out. And then I just lock on to the sound of the, the fridge and for 20 minutes. And anytime my, as soon as I catch myself with a thought wandering, I go right back to the sound of the fridge until I just, and until I get myself into a space where I'm just totally zoned out. Okay. So what, does that do for you? I can't explain it. I don't know how to explain it to you other than, uh, I feel better. I'm not that I'd felt bad going into it, but I have there, there's this, um, there's, I I don't have, there's peace. There just, there's this consistent peace that's there. Mm -hmm. Um, does it change your outlook on the future? It, does it, it change? Like, what is it changing for you? I, I don't know that I, I'm an optimist. So I, I, my, my outlook on the future is usually never like, oh my gosh, the world's falling apart yeah. like this, that, whatever. I just don't look at it that way. Um, but it helps me deal with my kids. I have awesome kids, but kids are, can be a lot, especially mm-hmm. when like they bring all their friends over and the house is like, Mm-hmm. full of kids. It helps me deal with that. It helps me deal with problems. I used to call myself a problem solver. As a CEO, I'm a problem solver. It was a great ego thing. That's what I'm a, I solve problems every day. You know what solving problems did every day? Just more, more, more problems. problems. Yeah. That's all you yeah. see. When that's I all you say, see. When I say I'm a problem <laughs> solver and I like totally wear that dude. as a badge of honor, it turns out all I have are problems that I'm constantly trying to solve. hmm and I, and then once you realize that ego is the only real problem, then, then all the rest of it can, can fall away, you know, and, 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 and that's, and, and really it's not even ego. It's, it's, it's this belief that somehow you're separated from God, mm-hmm. this belief that somehow God's up there on a throne and you're down here just eking out life like a worm, you know, like Like, and there's this separation, you know, he's on some star, you know, (laughs) light years away. Yeah. Um, That, that belief is the problem and, and not recognizing that God is within you. You have access to God at any moment. He's right there with you. You, There's no separation. It's like separating, it's separating a wave from the ocean that you, you can't do it. It, the wave is the ocean that the ocean is the wave. I love that because, and I love the scripture, the kingdom of God is within you. And that's like, whenever I, and it's so hard when you're anxious because that's when it's the hardest to meditate because you're so in your head, you're so in your head and your head, your ego wants to keep you there because it wants to keep itself alive. And so that meditation or that quiet thought really does like connect you and to that, like, 
eternal vastness yes. of space and love that is literally within that all exists of us. That exists outside of space and time. Yep. Which is now I'm convinced that's what eternity is. It's some, mm-hmm. it's this other thing outside of space and time where, where it, there is that peace, yeah. but it is within you. And, 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 and be that scripture, be still and know that I am God. Mm-hmm. I am convinced that's how you know God is by becoming totally still shutting off that just chatterbox in your brain mm-hmm. that's just going, 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 that just, that's not you. That's just it's not, you know, yeah. a mind just thinks thoughts. It just, it just thinks thoughts. It's not like you aren't those thoughts and, and, and recognizing, oh, I'm not those thoughts. That's just the mind doing what the mind does. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and getting to that place where you're just still, I, there was, so, so for the last, I would say like the last, there's a scripture that has like kind of haunted me. Yeah. Um, it, I don't know how to the right word, but it's from the Sermon on the Mount. It's, yeah. it's Matthew, or I mean, it's in Matthew chapter seven where, where Christ is talking about how people will say, didn't we cast devils out in your name and, and did these miracles in your name? And, and, and he says, is Lord, Lord, he's not everyone that says Lord, Lord will enter the kingdom of heaven, you know, like, and we'll say, well, we did these things. Like we, we did all the things. Mm-hmm. How, and, and he <laughs> says, and he says, uh, I never knew you or, or, if you look at other translations, it's, ye never knew me. And, oh, wow. and it's, and it's, that's so interesting to me because I are always haunting me because it's like, these are people that are trying and thinking, thinking that they are doing the right thing or on the right path. And, and yeah, maybe they're, they're doing good things, but like get to that point. It's like, do you really know God? Yeah. Does he really know you? Like, yeah. of course he knows you. He created you. So there's, there's no, that's why I think the translation, ye never knew me. Yeah. You never knew me is, is more correct because yeah. of course God he, knows you. Yeah. He created you, but you, do you really know God? And I got to this place of like, do I, do I know God? This is like a couple years ago. It was just like, I don't. This is what I was talking about when I was like reevaluating everything. I don't know that I do. I know that I've been going through the motions on this other stuff and, and, but I don't, I don't really know Jesus. Do I really know Jesus? Do I really know? Like, I believe Jesus is the son of God and savior of the world, but what does that really mean? And you can believe anything, but like, what is it? Yeah. But what is it? What, what, what does it mean? And, and, and so I, it was weird. We were on vacation in Florida and we were staying at this like condo. Uh, it's not, it's like kind of, I guess kind of like an Airbnb, but it's just a big condominium that y'all yeah. rent out. But, but I, um, I opened up the closet and there were like games in there and, and there was this book, uh, um, just the writings or the words of mother Teresa I think it's called a heart full of love or something like that. Board games in this book. And then this random, this <laughs> yeah. just random book of mother Teresa's a little paperback mother Teresa book. It was old. And I saw it and I looked at it. I pulled up. I kind of, and there's like this drawing of mother Teresa on it. And I, and I thought, Hmm, I like open it up and I, I like read a paragraph. I thought, Oh, I'm here on vacation. I, I'll read this book. I'll read this book. I don't, I mean, I, I, I know like what I've heard about mother Teresa yeah. or what, whatever I saw in the news or whatever, you know, mother Teresa. And so, I, but I'd never like read mother Teresa's words. Yeah. I've, I haven't either. Yeah. I should. Yeah. And, and this is, and she was in there talking about how to know Christ. And this is your question at the time. And right? this is my question. This is literally my question. Like, how do I really know Christ? Like, do I, do I know him? And, and, uh, and she said every day you need to, and I'm totally butchering this in a paraphrase, but you need to see Christ in the eyes and faces of the people you serve. And, and I thought, okay, like I, I, let, I'd let that simmer for a while, you know, but I, and I kept thinking about like, well, what does that mean? Like, I know that, I know what it, it feels good when you go serve somebody or you go do something nice for mm-hmm. somebody, you know, like, 
like, I'm all about going and helping somebody out. Or, you are. Yes. You yeah. know, um, cause it feels good. You know, mm-hmm. it feels good and you help somebody out and whatever. But I had never like thought about when you do it, look for Christ in the eyes of the person you serve. And, um, and so I don't know when it was, it was a couple months later. I'm down in Tucson, Arizona, which I love Tucson, Arizona. And, um, I am driving out of a parking lot, um, like out of a Lowe's hardware store parking mm-hmm. lot. And there is this guy standing there with a cardboard sign um, that says, I need homeless and I need socks or something about being homeless and I need socks and underwear. And that's so specific, isn't it? I've like, never seen anything like that. You, you've seen all, I've seen all kinds oh, of yeah. them. Like I like everything. I'm a vet to yeah, yeah, I yeah. need help with my kids to I just need money for beer yeah. to like, you know, but I need I need socks and underwear. And uh, man, I'm going to start crying. And um, I had my 15 uh, year old son with me, Leo, who's just such a good heart on that kid or whatever. I know he's great. He's such a good Fantastic. kid. And, uh, we drove past him. We didn't say anything. We lo- we both read the sign and didn't say anything and started driving down the street. And, uh, and we got maybe a half a block down the street. And I said, Leo, I think we need to go get, I like turned and looked at him and I said, Leo, I think we need to go get that guy some socks and underwear. And he was like, he was his eyes were already he was like he knew in his heart he needed to say dad we need to go get that guy some socks and underwear and so we went and and bought him some socks and underwear and a towel did you take him in huh did you take him in the store or did you just go buy stuff to bring it to him oh so yeah so leo and i just went to the store okay and and like what size do you think he is he was a little guy so we kind of knew us so anyways we 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 went in the store got his stuff and came back to him and pulled, came back around, pulled up and I rolled down the window and came up and I said, Hey man. And I had saw it. And he was like, Oh, he was just like, he was so grateful. But when he came up and he saw that and he, I looked in his eyes and I'm not kidding you. I saw the face of Christ. Like it was, it was such an incredible, Oh my gosh. It sounds like a baby right now. It was such a powerful spiritual experience to me to see that and to feel connected to this guy, to feel connected to God, like in a way that I had never experienced or felt before and had this conversation, this beautiful conversation with this guy, me and Leo did and, and then left, you know, like there, I did there what I could do for him. I didn't know that's what he was asking for. He wasn't and and I didn't know what else to do for him or whatever, but left with him feeling uplifted and us feel, like feeling uplifted, but it wasn't feeling about feeling uplifted. It was about see Christ in the eyes of the people you serve. And I just had not had an experience like that before. I feel like maybe I've had that ex- as on some level had that when someone's been serving me, you know, when someone's done something for me totally. And I've just, but, but it was the other way around this time. And it felt, it was, it was so incredible. And I realized that's how, you know, God is through real true service and not service. So you can feel good, not service. Like it might, it's probably going to be inconvenient service and it's probably going to like, I mean, not that that was inconvenient for us, but, but I've had experiences after that where it's maybe not so convenient, but that's, that's how that, at least that's where I'm at now is I'm seeking to know God through the eyes of the people I'm trying to serve. Thank you. I don't know if we need to say anything else. Kevin, thank you so much for coming, and um, thank you for being a good dude and a good example for me. Yeah, man. I thanks for having me. I I was like, when you called, I was like, yeah, sure. I mean, I don't know, but I was, but I'm happy to be here and 
And I'm so glad. I mean, my two goals with this podcast is to help men not feel so alone in their struggles. Yeah. And then to show lives worth emulating. And so you, uh, you brought both of that today. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.